traffic management has come a long way since the early days of flight. It has evolved into the system we have today, put in place in the age of jet travel. And we are still managing air traffic the same way we've done for decades, even though the airspace users have changed. Today, there are many new players as UAS and UAS technology transform air travel. All these new unmanned vehicles must be safely integrated into our skies. That means a revolution in the way we manage air traffic. How can air navigation service providers move forward? We asked drone industry experts from around the world at two recent unmanned aircraft events held at ICAO's headquarters. We heard a lot of different ideas, but there was agreement on one thing. We need new ideas. That means new infrastructure, including data, technology and system architecture. The airspace doesn't belong to one person. They were talking about a common good. And I think, it, you know, and people are talking about a privilege, the privilege to fly a drone. I think it's like the privilege of driving. So I think if, as part of that privilege, I should be willing to share my data for what I want to do um, with the other users of that space. Data that should be shared in order to enable that is data on operations experience, including incidents, accidents, hazards that are identified, the operator's experience, competencies developed, and data in that realm, which will enable players from all over the world to use the shared data to develop systems for the benefit of all in the unmanned aviation world. The way that the technology is going to have to increase, it has to be split time, it has to be um, microsecond transmission, it can't be voice technology. This small UAV introduction allows us to look at a completely different kind of architecture that are built on the tools that we have today basically the same system as your mobile phone today, or the internet. And that, and that frightens some people because you think, well, we have all these safeguards built into aviation. That's true. But when was the last time the cloud went down? Never. We just have to get used to that notion. We have to rely on that architecture. We need new industry guidelines, including new domestic and international regulations, new standards and practices, and new concepts of operations. There's no shortage of RPAS technology. We've got supersonic drones now that can go from Montreal to Australia in five hours. The difficulty we've got is that we haven't got a regulatory framework that not only can support that, but even allow that. It's really important, especially for RPAS, that we create a regulation which is capable to learn from the evolution. Because we don't know what's the next step, it's evolving. We now have new airspace users, mostly outside the aviation environment, not having the same knowledge and also not having the same safety perspective that we have. So on the one hand we have the conservative areas, on the other hand we have a very innovative part. The challenge will be in bringing these two worlds together and to try to have a common understanding on the issues involved. And we need new roles for flight crew and air traffic controllers but we're talking about totally new levels of automation, uh, detect and avoid, uh, equipment talking to each other. What is the role of the human in that system? What can the human best do? Pilots aren't going away. They, their, their role may change, but their role has changed dramatically. If you go back to the Wright brothers flying across the Atlantic and you look at, at somebody operating a Dreamliner, uh, you know, Bone 787 these days, the role of a pilot has dramatically changed over a period of time. So air traffic controllers, like ever other actors in the systems, play a critical part today. But the part that they play today is heavy on the control, air traffic control. What we're looking for is for the technology to do the routine part and for the human to intervene only in an unusual situation. And finally, these experts told us we need new ways of thinking and new conversations with the flying public about this revolution in air traffic management. Public perception needs to be managed, there needs to be education, information, to enable them the awareness of what these systems are actually capable of. How are they safe? What makes them safe? And it's only until you step into the, the realm of the unmanned world, as it might be, that you have that understanding. And that needs to change. You know, it needs to be a more open conversation. IATA believes UAS and commercial aviation can work together. To join the conversation and to learn more, please visit us.
at www.iata.org forward slash drones.